All right, so now I want to ask you a question. What life, and, and, and I want you to pay attention to this question and not just hear it mindlessly. I want you to take your time. If you have to stop the video, stop the video and actually think about this. Some of you are really serious about the quality of your life. You're going to want to pause the video and actually write down the answer to this question I'm about to ask you. Because this is a powerful question that in of itself, if you actually take this one question seriously and do what I'm asking you to do, it's going to change your life. Just this one question alone. And here's the question. What life would you love to live? It is not a superficial question. It is not, uh, you know, a question for you to take lightly. Most people live a life by default. Well, I was born here, so I live here. I was doing this, so I do that. So I did, my parents do this, so I did that. I went to school here because I was, in other words, we live a life by default, whatever is being handed to us. No wonder we end up unhappy and frustrated, overweight, and in bad relationships. So the alternative would be for you to live an intentional life. What does it mean to live an intentional life? It means that you actually take the time to discern, to decide, to choose what life you would love to live. So we start with the result. We call this end result imagery. What life would I love to live? I want to live on a yacht in the middle of the ocean, whatever. That's not my case, but I'm giving an example. So I start with the end result. Now, I'm not there yet. And then I scale it back to my present, and we call that point A. Now I have a point B, which is the life I'd love to live. And now we have a gap, right, between where I'm at today and where I want to be in terms of my world, my life. Now we recognize that the person who lives the life I want to live or I would love to live is very different from the person that lives the life I actually live today. There's a huge difference because our lives, as you saw in the first video, are a projection of what's inside of us in our subconscious minds. So if I want to live the life of my dreams, I have to become the person that corresponds to that life. In other words, it is not about trying to change on the outside. It's not about painting the walls. It's not about trying to get a different car. It's not about that kind of thing. It's about becoming a person that vibrates in resonance with that life. I'll give you an example of this. A person comes to see me who's chronically single and they're looking for a mate. I tell them, well, tell me about the woman you want. Tell me about the man you want right? Depending on what you're looking for. Oh, I'm looking for a woman like this, like this, like this. And we go in detail on this. Okay, tell me more. But what kind of woman is she? What does she do for a living? Blah, 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 blah. What, what, what does this man? In, and we talk about this. And until the person has a really clear picture of this person they're looking for, you know, the client has a really clear picture of exactly what they want, exactly what they're looking for. I want a man like this. I want a woman like this. Once that picture is really clear, really well defined, sometimes we write it down. I mean, we really go at it, right? Once we have the really clear picture, I look at them, at them and I ask them a question. Would this woman date you? Would this man ask you out? I have never seen a single person in my office who told me, oh, yes, Intuitively, we immediately realize that the person, when we're single, I'm saying, chronically single, suffering because we cannot meet anybody, we intuitively realize that the person of our dreams is not someone who would be with us. Why? Because we recognize that we have to change. So, for instance, I ask a man, so why wouldn't this woman of your dreams want to be with you? Well, man, because I don't make enough money, because this, because that. Now, this is just an example. I'm not suggesting it's about the money. I said, okay. So then you recognize that you have to make more money in order to be in this relationship. Again, maybe the example is a little bit poorly chosen. As you've noticed, my videos are not scripted, right? But to illustrate the point, you see, what the person is actually acknowledging is, I'm not yet the man I need to become in order to be with the woman of my dream. I'm not yet the woman I need to be for this man to be with me. We recognize that. Our job, therefore, is not to go out there and find the man, find the woman. How do you think I've married all these people at the office? Not by going to find a date for them. I helped them become happily married by helping them become the person 
that their, for lack of a better word, soulmate would be interested in. We have to become that person, and then we naturally walk into each other's lives and merge. I give you this example because when we talk about lifestyle, the same exact thing happens. So the question then, instead of saying, well, what kind of mate are you looking for? The question then becomes, what sort of life would you love to live? We have to, we have to really do our homework on this. What sort of life would you love to live? And then we ask ourselves, is this person that I am today compatible with that life? If I told you as an example that, among other things, the life that I would love to live is really clean and organized. There's a life where everything is organized, as an example, right? And then you ask me, well, but is your home organized? And I tell you, no, my place is a pigsty. It's a mess. I'm really messy. Well, clearly, the person I am today is not compatible with the life I would love to live, right? So then our job would be, to, in this example of organization, it's not my case, but it's an example, our job would be, okay, let's become more organized first. Because the life you would love to live includes organization, you just told me you're not organized, so we're going to work on being more organized. Then we go to work at it, and we become more organized. Again, these are simplistic examples, but you get the point. And eventually we become the person that is compatible with, that vibrates in resonance with, that is in correspondence with the life we'd love to live. Guess what? At that point, we realize I already lived the life I want to live. So this is how we get there. And my question to you, and I repeat, what life would you love to live? What sort of relationships would you have? And I don't just mean romantic type relationships. I mean, what sorts of relationships would you love? Who would you associate with? What sort of work would you do? What sort of income would you have? What sort of choices would you have because of your income and position? What sorts of places would you visit? What would you do all day? How would you sleep at night? Very important. How would you wake up in the morning? I don't just mean whether you have an alarm clock or... In, that's not what I mean. How would you be feeling as you wake up in the morning? See, a lot of people dread waking up, right? How would you like to feel when you wake up in the morning? Excited, happy, spring out of bed next to your lover, next to... Alone? How would you love to wake up? Think about that for a second. And then you have the more mundane things like what sort of car would you like to drive? Where would you like to live? That kind of thing which is also important because the material quality of our lives has a lot to do with the spiritual quality of our lives. There's nothing spiritual about misery and poverty. We need to have abundance and choices because if you don't have choices in the world, you cannot flourish. You cannot become self-actualized. You cannot become who you're meant to be. Choices are important. And in the physical world, the choices come from a certain degree of financial abundance. So building that abundance is important to give you the choice. If you tell me, right now I choose to travel through Europe, okay, what would that cost and can you make that happen? If you tell me, absolutely, great, we don't have a problem there. But if you tell me, it would really mean a lot to me if I could travel to Europe, but I can't because I don't have the money, then dude, we're not free to choose the life that we'd love to live. You see? So we have to work on these things so that we can live the life we'd love to live. That's what hypnotherapy is all about when you come to see me, because we're going to, we, we can do a number of things, but a lot of people come to see me because they want to live a bigger life. They want to grow up. They want to become self-actualized. They want to be free. Free from what? From themselves. The biggest jail cell we live in is ourselves, our own minds. Plato has this, this text, you know, going back 2,500 years, and he talks about the allegory of the cave, and you have a bunch of prisoners living inside of a cave, and the cave is the mind. Our old thoughts of limitation, we're so little, we're so small, we're so incapable, that's the cave, that's the mind. Those are the prisoners, we are the prisoners. But then one day, one of them is able to escape and goes out into the light and realizes that we can be free and expand so when he feels good about the light and the life that he can now live, he thinks of his buddies back in the cave and comes back into the cave to help him out. 
And so would you like to be that person that comes back into the cave and helps your buddies out? Is that part of what you dream or the life of your dreams? And so it's really, really important that you give yourself permission to dream big. What sort of life would you love to live? Don't be afraid of it and don't be limited by what you think you can have. Dream big. Write it down. And then let's take an honest look at your life today. If you don't feel that you're quite there yet, don't feel bad. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. We do this all the time. The people who you consider to be extremely successful have all done this. They have a dream. They dream big. And they're also very honest about their current situation. The current, the current situation is what we call point A, for lack of a better word, really technical term, point A. And the life you'd love to live, we call it by the very scientific name of point B. <laughs> so now this mindful journey is really from point A to point B, the life I live currently to the life I'd love to live. Those two men, in my case, a man, right? Those two men, the one that lives life A and the one that lives life B, those two men are very different. The only way for me to live my point B, my life that I would love to live, is for me to become that man. My job then is through self-hypnosis, through hypnosis with other practitioners, change who I am so that I'm compatible with the life that I'd love to live. And you have the same opportunity. You have a dream as well. And the only way you're going to get there is if you become that person. And the only way to become that person is to change you from the inside. The inside means your subconscious mind. We're going to have to dig deep into your subconscious mind, change the programming that was placed there before you can remember yourself in childhood. Maybe when you're in your mommy's belly, you're already being programmed. Studies show that people remember under deep hypnosis stuff that happened when they were a baby in their mommy's belly. So it doesn't matter if you believe it or not. Um, if you do some research, you're going to realize that, yes, we have received a bunch of impressions as infants, and those impressions tend to stick with us later on in life. So it's important that we change who we are so that we can live the life we'd love to live. That's what hypnotherapy, that's what all the hype is all about. That's what hypnotherapy is all about. It's about living the life you'd love to live. And what prevents us from living the life we'd love to live is all of this programming that is toxic, that's stored in our subconscious mind, which we keep leaving out, which we keep... We keep on reprojecting, we keep on recreating our toxic past over and over because we're essentially addicted to it. Don't worry about it. Forgive yourself. Look, do this right now. Use your first name. What's your first name? John, Peter, Paul, Mary, Mary Beth. What's your first name? And say to yourself, Dear blessed Frank, please forgive me. This is called Hoponopono, right? Please forgive me. I'm so sorry. I love you. Thank you. And repeat this a few times. And notice how you become calmer. Forgive yourself. Talk to yourself and ask you to forgive you. Do this a few times. If you're not familiar with this, look it up. Hope Onopono. Hope, H-O-P, Oponopono. It's an old uh, Hawaiian tradition. It's just a form of, it's just a way of of getting into the zone a little bit and forgiving yourself and putting yourself in a better position to start your mindful journey from less to more, fat to fit, dread to dream relation, from burnout to your best life ever, from humanness to your divinity, your mindful journey. Let me know how I can be a part of your journey. I'd love to meet you. Blessings to all of you.